Hello and welcome to another video and today as you can see I am in my new office with a little bit different of a backdrop so had a chance to put up the guitar rack and I think it looks pretty awesome. Shout out to my wonderful girlfriend for helping me with that because putting that up really really sucked. Anyways the point of today's video and what I wanted to discuss with today's video is kind of just a check-in a six month check-in on the Xbox Series X and the PS5. Kind of how I feel about them six, seven months later after launch, where they stand and how they're looking towards the future. I think the answer might surprise you, especially considering where I kind of leaned when I reviewed the systems at launch. But let's go ahead and dive in. The biggest thing I'll come out and say right now is, you know, six, seven months into this, I use my Xbox Series X for almost everything. <laughs> and my PS5 kind of just collects dust. So... I demolished Demon Souls when the system came out. That was kind of my big primary game and I played the shit out of it and I really enjoyed the system for that and Astrobot. And then I have Miles Morales, I've played a little bit of Returnal more recently. That's kind of it. Like I haven't played a lot of PS5 games because I mean if I'm being honest, it really hasn't been anything that's captured my attention. I know a lot of you out there are going to be watching this video and say, well Ratchet and Clank. I've never been a Ratchet and Clank fan, so I'm not, it's not a game I'm going to play. And, well, Returnal, I think, is a really cool idea on paper. I do, and I love roguelike games, do not get me wrong. And it looks absolutely stunning, and I like that it's going for that, like, 1979 Alien aesthetic. The whole idea of making that entire game a big budget roguelike game, and then having runs last two to three hours is just really kind of counterintuitive and so that in of itself is why I haven't played much Returnal. On the flip side of that I've kind of just been using my Xbox Series X a lot more between Game Pass, between any kind of releases that come out that I'm interested in picking up that are multi-platform. I primarily tend to stick with the Series X to play those. Kind of just the machine that I want to play. I mean most recently I played through Resident Evil 8 on the Series X right now, I'm in the middle of Mass Effect 2, part of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which is the uh, remastered uh, trilogy, which, you know, honestly has been awesome. And I think there's a lot of things that I would highlight about the Series X over the PS5 and why I think right now, speaking, it's probably the best bang for your buck between both systems now. With that being said, we're six, seven months removed from the launch. Both systems still cost the same price. There's been no price drops. Um, there is also kind of the elephant in the room on Microsoft's side with the Series S, which, you know, at launch I said, hey, it seems like a good idea. I now think it's a bad idea. Now, again, as I always say with these types of videos, you know, the primary things I will always tell someone when they're looking to buy one of these systems is, you know, does the platform you're looking at have any exclusives that you actually care about playing? Where do your friends play? And after that, maybe what controller do you like? Like, have you been a PlayStation controller fan for the last, you know, however long? Or have you been a Microsoft controller fan? I mean, Microsoft, they haven't really implemented too much on their controller design since the 360, which isn't a bad thing. They've made one of the most perfect controllers for systems. PlayStation 5, you know, they had a pretty massive redesign between the DualShock 3 and the DualShock 4, and then from the DualShock 4 to the DualSense. Um, at launch, I really, really liked the DualSense controller for its adaptive and haptic feedbacks. It's no longer the case. I feel like developers either are using it as kind of a cheap tactic, or it's just not being implemented very well. With the only game recently I've played that's really implemented it really well being Returnal. Uh, I played the Resident Evil demo on PS5, both of those, and I did not like the haptics there at all. That's one of the reasons why I stuck with the Series X. The other biggest reason why right now, if you were to ask me, what system should I buy, I would say the Series X, is, and it's the stupidest thing, smart delivery. So, you know, before the system launched, smart delivery was kind of pitched as this, like, uh, buzzword type thing where everybody's like, oh, yeah, of course, because they're going to update your games. In the last six to seven months, it has just once again highlighted Microsoft's pro-consumer strategy with taking games from last gen and having them forward compatible. And the way I would break this down for you is very, very simple. 
on the Xbox Series X when you install your game. When let's say, I'll give a prime example, and this is the perfect example I can give. Resident Evil 8, okay? You go out and you buy a Xbox copy of Resident Evil 8. You can play that copy on Xbox. Any of the Xbox One systems or any of the Xbox Series systems. When you, well, you can't play it on Series S because there's no disk drive, but you get what I mean. So when you pop that game into a Series X, it will come up and say, hey, there is an upgrade available, you know, for the Series X version of this game. Would you like to install it? You install it. It makes sure that you have the best version of that game and you go from there. On paper, sounds really, really stupid, but it has time and time again been the most important feature to me personally since this console generation started. On the flip side of it, with Sony, it is so ass backwards. And uh, the first experience I had with it was Mortal Kombat 11. So Mortal Kombat 11, they said, hey, anybody that owns a physical copy of the game can get the PS5 version for free. And I thought, hey, cool, I love Mortal Kombat. I wanna do that. So I took my PlayStation copy of the game, installed it onto the PS5, and in order to get the PS5 version of the game, you have to first install the PS4 copy. Once that's installed, then it presents you a little option when you like drop down on the PS5 like splash screen for the game, and you have to click to go into the store, redeem that version of the game, install the PS5 version of the game. So you have to have your PS4 install present to install the PS5 version of the game. And once that's done, then you can go back, you can delete the PS4 version of the game. And that has been consistent with almost every game released that has had an upgrade path for the PlayStation. And one other thing that I, would, I will highlight is why this is such an ass backwards system. A lot of times these games that have upgrades from PS4 to PS5 do not allow you to transfer your saves, which doesn't even make sense. The biggest one that I would put out there is like Spider-Man. So Spider-Man got a remaster for the PlayStation. If you bought Miles Morales, I think you can now buy it separately. To transfer your save, for me to transfer my save from the PS4 to the PS5 version, I had to go hook up a PS4, put my profile back on it, install my PlayStation 4 copy of Spider-Man, load it up, then use their own in-game service to upload my save. So not even uploading your save to the PlayStation Plus cloud, loading it up to whatever their cloud service is for Insomniac. And then on the PS5, in the main menu, you press triangle, download your save, and then it you know does its thing. And that's just Spider-Man. There are a multitude of games that have this upgrade path that do not allow you to transfer your save at all. And so it just leaves me baffled. I'm trying, there, what was the most recent one? Oh, most recently they announced at the end of June, Doom Eternal is gonna be the next game that's getting an update. You can't transfer your save from the PS4 to the PS5 version of that upgrade. On the Series X, it just carries your save over through the cloud. And the best part about you know the Xbox ecosystem with that cloud save stuff is you don't have to be a gold member to experience it. You know, if you, even if you're a silver member or whatever they call like the basic free version of, you know, being a member of Xbox Live, they still remember your saves. I'm pulling saves from games that I played 15 years ago. Like for, I'll give you an example. I installed Oblivion to my Series X last fall. Like when I first got the system, it pulled my Oblivion save from 2007. Just from the cloud, pulled that save that I had uploaded at some point over the last couple of years. That's mind blowing. It's it's just such a forward compatible and pro consumer move that I just don't see Sony doing. Yet at the same time, they seem so hyper focused on the PlayStation 4. And that leads me into my next reason why I think right now, the Series X makes much more sense if you're looking at both of these systems. And that is a extreme focus on last gen hardware. So I kind of highlighted this in my last video, but one of the things that impressed me the most about Microsoft's press conference was I noticed that at the end of almost any game trailer that said it was going to be out in 2022, that it was not coming to the Xbox One systems. It was only series systems and PC, which impresses me because that means internally that they're done making games for Xbox One at the end of this year. 
And if I'm being honest, I'm tired of playing last gen games on new hardware where it looks slightly better. Like I want games built from the ground up for the PS5 and the Series X. And I'm not getting that because we have to rely on last gen hardware. This is why on the flip side of things for Sony, you see games like God of War and Horizon Forbidden West coming to the PS4 as well because they have an over 100 million install base for that system. They're not gonna leave those users behind for high profile releases like that. Whereas for this, you know, the Series X, because of the way that they're doing everything, it just integrates with each other. It's another reason why I would sit here and highlight like how could Microsoft made some of these, you know, pro-consumer choices with the Series X. So, um, that and those are kind of the main reasons why, like, this last, you know, six months, I've primarily steered towards the Xbox. I also just, I, I prefer the controller, even still. I think the slight improvements they've made to the controller are much, much better. Um, and it's just, I, I like the ecosystem better. I, I just, I do. When they put out games through Game Pass that are play anywhere and I can just pick up my save between PC or, you know, come over and play on the Xbox, it's seamless. I don't have to wait for anything. And that's awesome. So on Sony's side of things, it doesn't really work that way. I mean, come on, man. It's 2021. Why, why are people paying for the ability to upload their saves? I don't think that should be a thing. So, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of pro-consumer moves there, and yes, I know for a long time the argument has been, well, Microsoft doesn't have any games. Microsoft doesn't have any games. You know, I just, I play on the PlayStation because they have exclusives that I care about, and Microsoft just doesn't know what they're doing. My argument against that would be now is Game Pass has, has destroyed that. They have games up the wazoo. <laughs> like... They have games. Just last night, and I'm not reviewing this game, I will say, like, I downloaded and tried out the new Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance game. I played 45 minutes of it. It sucks. <laughs> I don't think it's a good game. The combat feels really off. But the point I'm making here is, that saved me $40. Because it was a game I was generally interested in. Because I didn't have to pay that $40, it gave me the flexibility to download that, try it out for 45 minutes and say, you know what, this isn't worth it. This isn't this isn't worth my time. And there's no commitment there. I didn't put $40 down for that game. It's just part of my Game Pass subscription. So, deleted that, moved on. So, I mean, I'm looking at playing Yakuza Like a Dragon really soon because it's on Game Pass. I've wanted to play it for a while and it's just readily available for me to play. So, I, you know, and it's just, overall, Game Pass has saved me a lot, of, a lot of money. I don't have to buy any first-party Microsoft game ever again because of Game Pass. Even though I probably would have. I mean, look at Halo Infinite, for example. I really look forward to Halo Infinite. I really hope that it pans out. I have nothing but high hopes and, and, and tempered expectations for it, but I don't have to pay for that game. It's just going to be part of my Game Pass subscription. Forza Horizon 5, part of my Game Pass subscription. Whenever Fable, Perfect Dark, some of these games that are a lot further out do come out, part of my Game Pass subscription. And that's the point I'm trying to make. They have an established service here that is only making the benefits of purchasing the system even more like tantalizing than the PlayStation right now. Also, I'll still say like the PS5 is the ugliest system I think ever made. It looks like such a freaking eyesore. I cannot wait for a redesign. I don't care. I will trade mine in and I will get whatever the redesign is because I hate looking at it. I just, I cannot stand how that system looks. I like the UI. I like playing the system. I just don't like how the physical system looks. Anyways, guys, it's kind of my check-in for six months. I just wanted to briefly touch upon what, you know, what system I think is kind of primarily the best one to get right now. And I'm not sitting here trying to say I'm biased towards one or the other. This is just... For me playing games for the last six, seven, eight months on these machines, this is how I feel coming out of it. You know, this is as genuine as I can be. And I'm not trying to play bias towards one side or the other, but this is just how it is for me right now. I'd love to know in the comments below what system you're playing on, what you guys like. As always, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the video. And until next time.